Good morning. Um, my name is Jerry, and this is my colleague Hussein. Before we start, and for identification purposes, may I see your ID? Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Are you feeling fit and well enough to take the LPAT test? Yes, I am. So the test will start now. This is a test to assess your proficiency in speaking English as an air traffic controller. The test consists of two tasks and will take approximately 20 minutes. Task 1A. You are going to hear a number of routine and non-routine communications from pilots. You are the controller and must respond to each message using either standard ICAO phraseology, wherever appropriate, or plain English. There is no need for you to make any coordination. You may consider it done. There are no separation problems. You may give instructions to aircraft as you think necessary. My colleague will play the role of the pilots. There will be no visual contact before, between you. I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to give you a chart representing the traffic situation and the information necessary for the task. You may keep the chart in front of you during the task. You may make notes on the chart if you wish, as in the following part, you will be asked to give a report to your supervisor on any unexpected situation that you might, that might have occurred. You have one minute to look at the chart before the first communication begins. Do you understand the instructions? Yes, I do. task will now begin. Tender approach, um, Juliet, Kilo, Kilo, 2046, we are established on final calls from 813 miles out. Juliet, Kilo, Kilo, 2046, what you continue approach on the other thing? Tender approach, um, this is Finnair 2895. We are coming up to flight level 8 to your request higher. Finnair 28905, going to flight level 150. Candy approach, good morning. Charlie Sierra Alpha 555, climbing 3000 feet on uh, Echo Papa Lima. Want to Bravo departure? Any extra restriction on our flight today? TSA 555, no speed restriction. Report, fast. Report approaching 509. Approach. Um, hello. Um, November 329 Tango Alpha, descending through flight level 100 down to flight level 80. Speed 270, reducing to 2. Um, 220 knots. Would you confirm that runway in use today is 03? November 329, Tango Alpha, runway 03 in use. Continue descent 3000 feet, QNH 1019. Approach, uh, Juliet Kilo Kilo 2046, we are 8 miles on final. 
Can we switch on the uh, can we switch on the tower? Give it kilo kilo two zero four six and from from the Kamloops so one frequency one one eight decimal zero zero. And we're going to tango out for request radar vectors with gentle turns. We have large stock on board. Novembro 329 Tango Alpha, what you expect to do back to school in day 03, continue pressing that. Approach uh, Charlie Sierra Alpha 555, we have a uh, squall line ahead of us. Um, we can only stay on our track for another 10 miles or so. We'll need to turn. Please say 555, you will be to turn left or right. Approach November 329, Alpha Tango Alpha. Our weather radar is unserviceable. Do you have any information of the cells on the approach? November 329, Tango Alpha, um, negative, but we just received a report about four lines north of here. Approach uh, Charlie Sierra Alpha 555. The purser has reported uh, some oily smell at the rear of the passenger cabin. CSA 555, do you require any assistance? Approach uh, Charlie Sierra Alpha 55. Five. We need to hold somewhere until we are sure what the problem is. CSA 555, you may hold the present position. Report. Uh, for further instructions. Approach November 329 at Tango Alpha, passing Papa Alpha Charlie, request descent for ILS approach. November 329 Tango Alpha, continue descent 3000 feet, QNH 1019. Approach uh, from uh, Charlie Sierra Alpha 555. We are afraid a problem might have to do with the hydraulics. Can we hold in the area for another 10 minutes and then uh, go back to the field? CSA 555 is on. Um, we both ready to turn back to the field. Approach Charlie Sierra Alpha 555. We are now ready to come back and land. Request radar vector to final approach. DC 555, flying heading 210, which is downwind for only 0. Approach Charlie Sierra Alpha 555. The smell seems to be fading away, um, but uh, we would appreciate fire services on landing in case of possible hydraulic leak. Is a 555, uh, I will make sure the emergency services are available after the day. Approach Charlie Sierra Alpha 555. We finally found out the reason. We found a bottle of olive oil smashed in the overhead locker which leaked into the air conditioning. Mm, what you see is a 555. You still require assistance after that? Uh, disregard the um, emergency call, and this is the end of the first part of the task one. part of the task, you will be asked to explain the unexpected situation which has just happened. You will be explaining this informally to a supervisor, as played by my colleague. Do you understand the instructions? Yes. I understand that something unusual happened during your shift today. Can you take me through the situation step by step, please? Um, well, the ship it was okay, I have to say. It was not that unusual, but there was some weather noise in the squall line. It can be dangerous. And, and the 
method going to to the just that the bar is asked to be vectored left or right. That's core line. And um, I had that in, my, in one of my ships, so it was fairly new. And um, then there was an aircraft. Yeah. It was not clear to me. We had a problem with oil, but what it exactly was, I don't know. But then eventually we asked to go back to the airport and um, we asked for the fire brigade and the emergency services. Which, yeah, of course, we can do that, so, so I did that. But in the end, that didn't seem to be a problem at all. But that was a bit strange. Um, so I don't know exactly what happened. But it didn't seem to be an emergency. Anymore. Yeah, that was more or less, more or less my shift this morning. remember what was the exact nature of the problem reported by the charges here out? Yeah, it, it was, it had to do with oil, I'm sure. But he said we have an oily smell. And then suddenly he mentions hydraulic problems, which is rather serious. So it can, it can have a big impact on, uh, on the handling of the aircraft and, and, and breaking it like that after landing. So that's a serious issue. Uh, he requested to go back and in the end he said it was just an oil oil smell we had in the cabin. But still he asked for the emergency services at the airport. He said, I'm not sure. He might have to do with the oil as well. So it was not fully clear to me in the end. And I decided to at least give him the best service we could. We never know. Task two, you will be asked to look at a photograph and describe what you see. Then you will be given a number of questions related to the photograph. Answer all questions as fully as possible. You will not be assessed on what you think, but on how well you can express yourself in English. Okay. Okay. You will have 30 seconds to look at the photograph and you may keep it in front of you while we discuss it. Do you understand the instructions? Yes, yes. Please describe what you can see in this photograph. Um, yeah. It is definitely an air traffic control environment, but it's very weird. So I think it's a fake environment. I think it's a demonstration or so. Um, I see equipment we used to use at the control towers, or we're still using. But it's not a control tower, of course. It's 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 a, a setup. It's it's a demonstration area or so. Or, or I don't know what it is. It's very weird. But then I see a man having an interview for TV or so. And um, yeah, everything looks a bit old-fashioned. Yeah, I see the, the sky behind the persons working. But it's a display, obviously. So that's... Um, I, 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 my best guess is that it is a, a recruitment site. I don't want to be able to have controls.
let's now talk about aviation issues in a broader context. What do you think the presenter is talking about? Okay, I think the presenter is talking about um, the work being, being done in the background. Um, I mean, I'm not I didn't focus on the presenter, I was looking at the ATC environment in the back. Um, but I guess it was an explanation of, of what was happening behind him. Where might this take place? I don't know. I saw a big, a big tower in the, in the background of the picture. It is not, it's inside somewhere. It's in the building. And it's, it's not on a live ATC environment. And it's this, the city behind that could have stuck it. Somewhere in Europe, it is a, an exhibition or a, a, a equipment event or something like that. And who do you think the people are in the background? They, I don't know who they are, um, but they are, they pretend to be a traffic controller. Maybe uh, they are genuine traffic controllers, maybe not. They are simulating or demonstrating the work done by tower controllers. And what do you think the equipment in the background is used for? Yeah, as I said, it looks like uh, the equipment we, we, we used to have on control towers, so that is communication equipment, some information displays, weather information, um, maybe a radar display. But it's the, the, it's the technology we use at control towers. Okay. Let's now talk about aviation issues in a broader context. Okay. Do you think news about air traffic control is of interest to the general public? Mm, news about air traffic control? I don't, I don't think so. I'm sure I'd be read about that. It's not a kind of a job like, like a flight crew, so unless there are strikes, of course, then it's in the news. But why should it be of interest? I have no idea. In what way can publicity concerning air traffic control operations be an advantage or a disadvantage? It can be an advantage because it's not so much an issue at this moment, but, but, but over the last years there was a, a shortage of controllers, and it was not so easy to find interested young people, you know, people interested in the job. I think there was no knowledge about this job, um, but it could be good to have an understanding for the delays that they always um, claim to be caused by a traffic and sometimes it is, uh, it is true, sometimes too. Uh, but a better explanation about capacity, maybe, with the airports or, or, or control centers, what might help to generate understanding. And why do air traffic accidents and incidents receive so much attention in the media? Yeah, that's something I always ask when I, myself, when I meet. But then, of course, I'm still reading the stuff myself, so <laughs> probably there is a need. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's very, it's a normal habit that, that, that accidents are covered by the news, and it's getting worse and worse because we now have 10 TV cameras instead of two, all broadcasting the same, the same incident, and bringing the same news. But to answer the question, why is it of interest? I don't know. I think that's, that's natural. Humans are interested in disasters, but don't ask me why. The general public seems to know more about the job of a pilot. Why do you think that is? Yeah, that's clear. The pilots are, of course, sitting in front of the flyer and they are actually flying you to your destination. That's if the controls are invisible. There, are, there is the control tower at airports, but that's all you see.
discipline that you see in the case of the Thank you. That is the end of task two and the end of the examination. You may leave the room now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Shall we discuss our marks? Yes. No. Okay. Um, <coughs> should we start with uh, pronunciation in task one? Yeah. Um, I was quite happy with that, so mm -hmm. I think we are in the same. Yeah. Okay, so, and what about, um, I thought the structure was very clear. It's like a summer <laughs> phraseology, so really. And vocabulary? Still fine. Yeah. So um, he used um, <coughs> all the vocabulary in the right context, I thought. Um, comprehension? Again, fine. Yeah, so he understood all the questions very exactly. well, didn't he? Interaction? Um, again, I think it's, it's fine. It's all right. Okay, so we'll agree on a five. Yeah, I've got five as well. Right, okay. so let's agree on a five. Um, what about tasks? Um, an hour for a long bravo. Yes. <coughs> um, with pronunciation, I think five is it's quite a fair mark. Mm -hmm. What do you think? No, I thought that was... Um, I just had something actually referring back to task one. He said present and, and pleasant, but... Obviously, in the context, you would know that yeah. automatically. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but apart from that, that was the only um, pronunciation. Um, again, the structure for me was very clear. Yeah. Okay. And vocabulary was appropriate. Absolutely. Um, he used the word strange and weird quite a lot, but that is fine. Yeah. Um, okay, it seemed to be a repeated word. And fluency? Fluency and comprehension, I was. Yeah, close to five, but after, you know, I've seen his performance, I think five is a pretty good mark. Yes. And um, I felt his comprehension was a five. Yeah, there was no misunderstandings. Yeah. He understood all the questions. There was only one thing, and actually, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but that was my message of trying to tell him that disregard the emergency call. And actually, he didn't understand, but that doesn't apply. So if we make the final decision on all the tasks A, B, or Alpha Bravo 2, um, I think we agree on pronunciation five, yes. as a 5, and the structure 5, five and vocabulary, okay, no five. issues there. there. Um, he was very um, <coughs> informative and he had immediate responses, so again for fluency. I think it was fluent enough to get 5. So. And comprehension, um, there were no no issues there. And interaction? That was quite good. I yes. Think we got engaged in the conversation. And, um, I think we handled it pretty good. Yeah, I do too. So do we agree on a five for yes. the final level? Okay, so that's a five. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You did. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I'd like to know your idea, but. Yeah. Right. So, that's okay. Yep. That's